Well, good morning, everyone. Did you sleep well? No? <laughs> now, as we move along, sometimes we get mixed answers to that. Things get stirred up a little bit from the sessions or from the movies we watch, movie clips and so forth. Ego gets chased out of his hiding, hiding space and has to find another dark corner to another dark rock to hide under sometimes. Sometimes I've envisioned it like, uh, like one of those deep wells, uh, those old stone wells where you, you think there's like a little spider down at the bottom of the well and you shine the flashlight down and it will, it will move away from the light. If the beam goes down in one part, it will just move over to the other and you move the beam and it moves over to the darkness. The ego has to stay in darkness to seemingly have, a, have an existence or perpetuate its seeming existence. And it's light, the exposure that dispels it. So eventually when your willingness and readiness grow very strong, it's like turning on a bright, bright one of those big spotlight things, aimed down the well. And the ego is just like, nowhere to go. It's filled with light. That's that's a fun way to, uh, that's the way to end the ego's seeming existence, is just bringing the light, bringing the darkness to the light over and over and over until you just don't choose to have any areas or aspects of the mind that are concealed and held in darkness. And then everything then is openly revealed. But it's uh, very abstract when you get into that, so it's quite disorienting at times on the spiritual journey because you have these moments of abstraction and uh, uh, Gary was telling me yesterday that during the first talk he said it was the, the figure of David was like a little was glitchy <laughs> patchy <laughs> I've had that happen in a lot of gatherings where people will say yeah I started to I could still barely hear your voice, but the image just started to fade away, and it's, the perception started to teeter and tilt a little bit, and I said, oh, that's good. But it's very disorienting to the ego. The ego thinks that everything is solid, and when you start to go deeper into your mind, things seem a little more surreal, you know, like a surreal painting or something, and at first it's a bit disorienting, but then after a while you start to say, oh, that, that feels kind of cool. I kind of like this surreal feeling. Uh, I could go with this. Uh, I think I'll go in that direction a bit more. It does seem also, in terms of the spiritual journey, that, that you can go through some phases where you're pulling your mind away from the ego so rapidly that, that um, you don't really seem to get the external, the seeming external confirmations. And those are just uh, phases which are really asking you to go more on your inner experience and to trust that small still voice and that guidance and to remove this desire to see external witnesses and proof as if they're really external, they're really just reflections of mind. But I think there's a famous part of the Bible where, where uh, Thomas comes up to Jesus and you know, and after the crucifixion and the resurrection and kind of is, is checking the hands or the arms of Jesus for the, the holes and everything and, and Jesus kind of says in essence, well, you know, blessed are those who have seen and believed but far more blessed are those, you know, who have not seen and yet believed, you know, who have this inner faith, this inner desire for God and to tune into that small still voice. And um, I thought it was kind of interesting in the story with Jesus how Mary Magdalene was the first one that uh, Jesus saw. And uh, I think that was just like a symbolic reflection of she really had the, the eyes to see and the ears to hear. In other words, she was more prepared to really understand the essence of what Jesus was teaching. And symbolically he saw her first. And um, it, that's the way that this works. It all starts within your own mind, within your own consciousness. And then the more you become 
clear of your desire to, to really experience God, and the deeper you go into that desire, and the more it becomes single and focused, the more unified your perception becomes. I say the word more because that's kind of a time concept, and, and it does seem when you're going through the awakening that, that it is a progressive thing. People have asked me, you know, is, is awakening a process or an instant? And that could be applied to forgiveness. Is forgiveness a process or an instant? And it actually is an instant, but, but it seems to be a process that you go through until you can fully open your mind and grasp that instant. At that point, it ceases to be a process. It would almost sound funny. Somebody would come up to you and say, what's the... Describe the process of forgiveness. And you'd be like, hmm, wow, I don't even know what that means. But the Spirit, of course, can come through and give you the stepping stones and the symbols. A lot of the spiritual journey is learning to not judge what comes out of your mouth, because it's very much based on the moment, what you're guided to say, and letting the Spirit speak it through you. So, you shouldn't be trying to have the sensor going uh, all the time. No, the Holy Spirit wouldn't say that. No, the Holy Spirit would definitely not say that in this situation. Uh, you know, it's this ego sensor that can be in the back there, and it's kind of like filtering the Holy Spirit. And what you really need to do is really develop a trust of just letting it come through, pop through.